trying to help us feel cooler. As I told some of you, I was driving across Kansas yesterday, and the max that I received was 113. So it was pretty warm. Uh, announcements. Today is Chocolate Pecan Pie Sunday. Yes, if you've looked, there is a lot of chocolate pecan pie out there. Um, I guess this is the official day of the year for chocolate pecan pie. So uh, you folks have taken advantage of that to have some special treats. And uh, Shirley explained that at the neighborhood baby shower that you were part of, um, folks were invited to come this Sunday and join you for a piece of pie. So that is also a, a way of outreach, which is a blessing. Today is worship committee meeting after worship. Are there any other announcements this morning? Arts in the Park is next Saturday. It's an organization that's trying to develop more appreciation for arts, a variety of arts. I think most of them are going to be physical, you know, drawing kind of arts, but they'll do music and other things too. And it's next Saturday at Stubby Park from 10 until 6, so you might want to stop by during the day and see what's happening. All right, Art in the Park. Which park? Stubby. It's, on, it's right by Aiden's Field. Okay. You folks will know that. Are there any other announcements this morning? If not, let us worship God together.
Let the people praise you, O oh God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you judge the peoples with equity and guide all nations upon the earth. Okay. Please remain standing and let us sing, Jesus shall reign where'er the sun. The words of music are on page 265 in your hymnals, and the words are in your book.
gospel reading comes to us today from Isaiah 56, verses 1 and 6 through 8. Thus saith the Lord, maintain justice and do what is right, for soon my salvation will come, and my deliverance be revealed. And the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord, to minister that to them, to love the name of the Lord, and to be his servants, on all who keep the Sabbath, and do not profane it, and hold fast my covenant. These I will bring to my holy mountain, and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar. For my house shall be called the house of prayer for all peoples. <clears throat> Thus saith the Lord God, who gathers the outcasts outcast of Israel, I will gather others to them besides those already gathered. The word of the Lord.
How are you guys doing today? What's, now, what, what's your name? Valerie. You're Valerie. I think we've met you before. How old are you? I'm 12. She is 12. Okay. What's your name, young man? Blake. Boy. Blake. Blake. Blake, how old are you? You're 10. Okay, I think we know you, but go ahead. This is Brittany. Brittany. Brittany, do you want to confide what your age is? Are you to that point where you don't want to tell us? 16. 16, sweet 16, okay. Oh, look, Rick, how old are you? Yeah. Way up there.
God can see the big picture. So who do we need to trust when we are unsure about the future? Blake? Very good. Correct answer. You get a gold star. And my shame on me because I didn't bring any goodies for you guys. But anyway, that's, that's who we need to do. Let's have a little prayer, and then I'm going to dismiss you guys. Dear Lord, we lift up these three special children to you. We pray they have an excellent 23-24 school year. Help them to focus on their studies. Help them most of all to feel loved and appreciated, knowing that you are in control and that you see the big picture. You can see the forest for the trees. You know all the circumstances and that you're working out things good for, for them in their lives. We just pray your blessings upon them as they go through this school year and in their family life. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you, guys.
likely through word of mouth accounts. In any case, she has come to him confident of his ability to heal her daughter. Initially, he ignores her, not bothering to acknowledge her at all or give her an answer. But she persists shouting out, repeatedly asking for help. The disciples get annoyed with her shouting, and they want Jesus to send her away. Why might the disciples consider it okay to shun her? Thoughts about woman. She's a woman, so women have no standing. If they're not part of, it, of one's own family, a man wouldn't be caught speaking to them. She's Canaanite. What did the Hebrew people think of Canaanites? Don't like them. They're unclean. You don't want to be near them. They're pagan and corrupt. In fact, they're unsalvageable. What else? Well, she has this child that seems to be possessed. And this suggests, well, maybe there's something wrong with her, right? Because if your children are, are suffering, it may be because of your sins being visited upon them. Another reason she might be considered unclean or unworthy. Initially, Jesus does not even answer the woman. Basically, he ignores her. He confirms that he does not feel any obligation to her. He says, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And it might have ended at that, but what? The woman persists. It is tough to read what Jesus says to her, isn't it? He says it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. He is essentially calling the Canaanites dogs. This would be a common attitude among the Hebrews with regard to them, and he is simply reflecting the culture that he is part of. Also, it seems that at this point in his ministry, Jesus believes he's been charged with retreating one might say, only the lost children of Israel, that is, Israelites who have fallen away from the faith or rejected it. What can we learn about this woman through her response to this slur? She persists. She continues to persist. She continues to believe in Jesus, right? She is confident that Jesus has the power to heal her daughter. She is smart because she doesn't react, but has a very clever comeback. Even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. She is respectful, sincere, and compelling. She uses humor and doesn't take offense. Because the Canaanite woman has her eye on the prize. What is that prize? Her daughter will be healed and made whole. The well-being of her child is paramount to her. And she's going to do whatever it takes to accomplish that. And Jesus has to acknowledge her great faith, her conviction that it is Jesus who can heal her daughter, and he grants her heartfelt desire. It is notable that in much of scripture, the people who have the greatest faith are those who need Jesus the most. Those who are described as poor in spirit. Great faith may come out of recognizing that we need Jesus, especially in challenging times when we or our loved ones are suffering, when times get difficult. It is when we appreciate how much we need Jesus that we experience that great faith as demonstrated by the Canaanite woman. 
And this isn't the only time of Jesus' ministry when it, when it is the outsider or the shunned who has the greatest faith and is appreciative of Jesus' power. This passage suggests to us that Jesus does not undertake his ministry and mission with the full knowledge of what it entails, that he is not infallible and all-knowing as we often choose to see him. Rather, we are reminded in this passage that he is fully human, and he is learning and growing and changing throughout his ministry. We know that he repeatedly turns to God for guidance and support. I think this is reassuring for us because it suggests that there is hope for us too to grow in our knowledge and understanding. The encounter with the Canaanite woman and the demonstration of her great faith may lead to a shift in Jesus' understanding of his call, that he is to offer salvation not just to the Hebrew people, but also to Gentiles. We know that the woman was passionate about rescuing her child. What is the prize that you have your eyes on? Certainly an important one is found in our passage from Isaiah. For soon my salvation will come and my deliverance will be revealed. And the prophet teaches us how to accomplish that by maintaining justice and doing what is right. With regard to seeking justice, both of our lectionary readings draw attention to the other. For the prophet Isaiah, it is foreigners. In Matthew, it is the Canaanite woman. After pharmacy school, I took a job at a hospital in eastern Kentucky, so our family moved there. It was quite an adjustment. I had not appreciated how different it would be culturally. We were living in Appalachia. I couldn't even pronounce that right according to the locals, but it's <laughs> Appalachia if you live there. Shortly after we arrived there, I was informed that we were foreigners. <laughs> I thought, well, we all live in America, so that seemed strange. But the locals saw that we were out of place. And it took several years, almost to the time we left, <laughs> for people to accept us as part of the community. And back to our passage from Isaiah, for the Hebrew people in the post-exilic period, what to do with the other was a raging debate among the Israelites. During the exile, there had been many intermarriages, and many children were born in these marriages. These were, in essence, foreigners. When the Israelites are returning to their homeland, the argument arises about what to do. Some argue for particularism, that the foreign wives and their children ought to be sent away to maintain the purity of the Hebrew race. But others push back against this line in the sand and encourage accommodation and acceptance. The book of Ruth illustrates this approach in its portrayal of Ruth and her loyalty to Naomi. The prophet Isaiah announces that foreigners who join themselves to the Lord will be welcomed on God's holy mountain. That God's house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. This casts a wide net, opening up the possibility of inclusion of all peoples. We might suggest that a similar vision is slowly becoming a part of Jesus' concept of his own ministry and mission. Ethnicity is a significant part of the story, and ethnicity is a significant contributor to the injustices that we see in our world today. We have biases, 
acknowledged or not, that affect the way that we think about each other. There are constant discussions or decisions regarding who is in and who is out. And this affects whether and how we are willing to work with others, cooperate with them, or worship and serve with them. The woman can be an example for us in her commitment to achieving her goal. She wants her daughter to be made whole. She is confident that it is Jesus who can make this happen. And so she continues to petition him for help in spite of the annoyed disciples and in spite of Jesus' resistance and own possible biases. She shouts, insists, and asks for action. Another passage about persistence is Luke 18, 1 through 8. Then Jesus told them a parable about their need to pray always and not to lose heart. He said, in a certain city there was a judge who neither feared God nor had respect for people. In that city there was a widow who kept coming to him and saying, Grant me justice against my accuser. For a while he refused. But later he said to himself, Though I have no fear of God, and no respect for anyone. Yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will grant her justice, so that she may not wear me out by continually coming. And the Lord said, Listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God grant justice to his chosen ones who cry to him day and night? Will he delay long in helping them? I tell you, he will quickly grant justice to them. And yet, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? The widow also has her eye on the prize. She knows that she deserves justice. She persists in the face of a judge who neither fears God or respects her. But she is successful. In the face of challenges, in pursuit of that which is most valuable to us, do we have the faith of these women? Do we have the persistence? Are we open to the notion that a variety of peoples are part of the enterprise and deserve to receive the blessings of God's kingdom so that we can maintain justice and do what is right in the sight of God? Let us pray. Lord, give us the faith we require. Give us persistence in the face of challenges. And motivate us to get involved to further justice and righteousness in the community in which we live. To make a difference. We pray in the name of the one who gives us peace beyond all of our understanding. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <coughs> Let us stand and sing hymn number 435, There's a Wildness in God's Mercy.
now time in worship when we respond to the word of the Lord by participating in stewardship of the church, by giving generously of what we have in our tithes and offerings. The ushers would please come forward. Thank you. 
people in Maui. Um, and then in Canada, they had uh, fires threatening popular populated areas. So we'll continue to keep them in prayer. Are there other special concerns this morning? Yes. Yes, we will continue to pray for the pastor nominating committee and its work, seeking out the person that God is sending here to First Leavenworth to be your next installed pastor. So we will pray for that. All right, let us join together in prayer. Lord of creation, we gather here this morning in your holy name to praise you and to honor you, to give you thanks for the many blessings we have received, to support one another in our spiritual journeys, to remember that you are present and active in our world, bringing about your kingdom in small and mighty ways. Fill us with your spirit and enable us to be a part of your holy work in this community and in the world. We lift up to you our worries and concerns, knowing that you will answer our prayers in your way and in your time. We pray for the old church throughout the world. We pray for pastors and teachers, mentors and spiritual counselors, elders and deacons, and the many people who are actively serving the faith through their work. We remember especially those whose lives are at risk in worshiping you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for creation and for a reversal of degradation that has taken place in it. We give thanks that nature is persistent and restorative. Help us to have the courage to take the necessary steps to ensure that there is a healthy world for future generations. And we lift up all of those who are suffering from climate catastrophes, and especially those suffering from the fires in Maui. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for peace, Lord. Bring peace to our homes, our communities, our nation, and our world. Cause wars and conflicts to cease, conciliation to be learned, Diplomacy to be applied so that all peoples might live peaceably together. And let us be peacemakers, using Jesus who brings us his peace as our guide. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for all of those who are suffering, bring healing to the sick, comfort to those who mourn, relief to the anxious and depressed. Be with the least, including the orphans and widows and immigrants. Help us to see those in need with fresh eyes and guide us in the ways that we might help them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for our enemies and those who wish us harm. Forgive us for the ways that we have hurt others. We pray for those who are different from us. Help us to welcome them as your beloved sons and daughters and treat them with love and justice. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. God, help us to keep our eyes on the prize, a place in your kingdom and eternal life. Cause us to be grounded in our faith and witnesses to your mercy, loving you above all else and our neighbors as ourselves. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray all of these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Hear us now as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us for our debts, as we forgive our debts. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For God is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let us stand and join in our closing hymn. Help us accept each other in number 754.